you guys made the decision to remodel the house on your own. So why do I have to pay for it? My mother-in-law makes an unreasonable remark. Surprisingly, my husband sighs with her. Right, just as you say. What? I'm stunned by his unexpected reply. What are you thinking, honey? I'm Kylie, a 35-year-old busy nurse. My job is quite demanding, but I find it challenging and satisfying. I've been lucky to have someone who has been my main pillar of support, my husband Martin. We went to the same high school and started going out during university. So we have been together for over 15 years, even though we've only been married for about two years. Being together for so long, We've grown to understand each other quite well and accept each other's flaws. Sharing a life with him brings a sense of security and peace, and spending time with him is invaluable to me. Despite the happiness in our lives, there is someone who troubles us, my mother-in-law Julie. She clearly disliked me from the first time we met. Are you the same girlfriend who's been with Martin since college? Never thought you'd keep it up for so long. No more goals would give up and step aside, don't you think? You should have let him go. I couldn't understand what she was saying at first. According to her, Martin proposed to me out of pity. She claimed he was reluctantly tying the knot because it would be awkward to break up after such a long relationship. I was shocked to hear such a thing from someone I met for the first time. Martin was furious at her and lectured her along with his father down. Mom, what the heck are you saying? Do you really think I'd marry out of pity? I genuinely love her and want to spend the rest of my life with her. He's right. He's sincere and has his own principles. What you said was disrespectful to Kylie. Scolded by them, she rolled her eyes and looked indifferent. I don't see the point of defending her. So the first meeting ended up being a disaster. When we had dinner with both sets of family, she kept making snide remarks about me and my parents, only to be scolded by her husband and son. Since I had already informed my parents about her, they weren't too surprised, but they were still amazed at the extent of her behavior. Despite all this, we managed to have a beautiful wedding and have been living happily. The only thing is that whenever we visit my in-laws, Julie continues to bully me. Are you still working, Kylie? Um, yes. Being a wife usually means keeping the house and taking care of your husband, you know. And yet, why are you so selfish? I feel sorry for Martin. He's too kind to ask you to be a housewife. I'm troubled by her unfounded fantasies. Martin and I have been good communication. And when it comes to work, we've agreed to do our best in our own ways. Since he lived alone for a long time, He's able to handle household chores. I have irregular work hours like night shifts, so we lead independent lives. We find time to have meals together and enjoy relaxing moments when our schedules align. That's how we have found the best way for us to be a couple and live happily. Mom, are you telling her something unnecessary again? Don't tell me you are picking on her. I didn't say anything really. I just gave her a little lecture. What do you mean, a lecture? You said something nasty, didn't you? Oh, please. Anyway, did you get what I was telling you, Kylie? You better follow what I say. She blubbers random things as she walks away. When Martin and Dan are not around, she starts insulting me immediately. It's really amazing how she never gets tired of it. She's had this attitude toward me since we got married. So honestly, I don't like her. I thought she would eventually get tired of bullying me. 
but she has kept it up without fail. Even when scolded by Dan and Martin, she doesn't care. I think she could use that strength for something better. Unlike her, Dan is incredibly pleasant to be with. We go out to eat with him sometimes. He tells Julie he is meeting his friends and secretly comes out with us. If she finds out that she has been left out, she would definitely be furious. Well, ideally we would love to go as a family of four, but with her attacking me non-stop, it's impossible. Besides, both Martin and Dan find it more relaxing without her selfish and overbearing presence. So it's better for the three of us to have a peaceful meal. Everything other than her had been going well in our lives, and she was the only troublesome presence. However, just recently, an unexpected event occurred. Dan suddenly fell seriously ill and passed away. Both Martin and I were quite shaken by the sudden news. When we rushed to the hospital, his cold and lifeless body was lying there. Dad! Martin crumbled to his knees at the sight of him. While comforting Martin, I couldn't stop my tears either. To make things easier for him, I took the lead in arranging and preparing for the funeral. He managed the role of the chief mourner, while Julie did absolutely nothing. Moreover, she didn't even seem terribly saddened by the death of her husband. Despite spending most of their lives together, and being supported by him for so many years. I wondered why she was so indifferent. Regardless of her questionable demeanor, we were able to have a heartfelt gathering where his memories were cherished. Many people came to bid farewell to Dan, who was well liked in the community. He must have been touched too. Well, it was a bit unfortunate that the love of his life seems to be unemotional. After the funeral, we tried to go back to our normal routine. At first, it was difficult to pretend everything was okay, but eventually, I started to become more positive about life. Amid us all that, Julie showed up at our house unannounced. That had never happened once since we got married, so we were a little freaked out. What's up, mom? Couldn't you give us a heads up before coming? I won't stay long. We reluctantly let her into the house. So what's the deal? Martin asked as I served drinks at the dining table. Then, she made a surprising statement. I want you guys to move in with me. What? We were totally taken aback. Um, what did you just say? Martin asked hesitantly. I'm telling you to move in with me. Why do you have to be so condescending? And why all of a sudden? Well, I'm kind of lonely after your dad passed away. And it's inconvenient in many ways. There's no one to do the heavy lifting. And living alone in a big house makes cleaning a pain. If something happens to me, there's no one to help either. In case of illness or break-in, there's no one to rely on. Well, it might be true, but can we regularly visit you instead? We have irregular work hours, so living together might disrupt your routine and cause trouble for you. Are you saying you don't want to live together? It's not like that, but being told suddenly is inconvenient, you know. We are currently in a rented apartment, and moving to your place would be too far from work. We desperately tried to convince her. As Martin said, being told to move in with her all of a sudden was troublesome. Honestly, her selfishness gave me headaches. No matter what we said, she insisted on staying until we agreed with her. I'm struggling and asking for help, so why won't you help me? Don't you have a heart? She started yelling at us. She had no idea that the more she got upset, the more we became distant. Having said that, we also knew 
If we continue to resist her, it would become even more troublesome. So we reluctantly agreed with her. She chirped, Oh, finally! It took too long! And walked out of our apartment satisfied. Just from that hour long discussion with her, both of us were totally drained. Thinking about having to live with her was quite depressing. But once we had accepted, there was nothing we could do about it. Even if we had refused her, we were sure she would have caused trouble one way or another. We tried to think that it was better to be close by and deal with her immediately. After that, we discussed various aspects of living together until we found a solution. We came to the conclusion of living in a duplex house. When I mentioned the dilemma to my parents, they suggested taking over their house. They were considering moving to the countryside for retirement and had been contemplating whether to renovate the house or rent it out. Since they said it would have been most appreciated if I inherited it, we decided to move into their house. Considering we would probably have a hard time living with Julie in a single family house, we thought about remodeling it into a duplex. Also, as I mentioned to her before, my work hours were irregular, so I was concerned about inconveniencing her with late night or early morning comings and goings and daily noises. So splitting the house into two separate residences seemed like the best idea. We explained all this to her at one point. Are you okay with our plan? Martin explained in detail, but she wasn't really listening. Yeah, that's fine. So we can live in a proper house, right? Of course. We'll remodel it. Then there is no problem. I got really worried if it was genuinely okay. But since she said it was fine, I had let it go. Then we proceeded with the construction. After a few months, the house was complete and we moved in. We were very impressed by the aesthetic. Even from the outside, it looked so clean and new, like it was just built from scratch. It's amazing, isn't it? The remodeling was definitely a good idea. We were just in awe of our new residence. Suddenly, we were pulled back to reality by Julie's scream. What the heck is this? Why is it a duplex house? We turned around to look at her, perplexed. She was glaring at us with a terrifying expression. I never agreed to this. The entrances are even separated, so it's not living together. We sighed at her angry complaints. Mom, I checked with you a few times, right? I explained in detail, and now you're complaining? I told you it would be a separate living because our lives are irregular and might cause inconvenience otherwise, right? Well, you might have said something like that, but I don't approve. You did say it was fine. I've confirmed it with you multiple times. This is non-negotiable. Take it or leave it. Faced with Martin's firm stance, she couldn't retort and mumbled something. It seemed like she wasn't entirely convinced, but she reluctantly agreed and went inside her own house. We breathed a sigh of relief. It was really frustrating not knowing when she would explode. It was a good thing we went for a duplex. Even so, she continued to be a bother though. The doorbell rang repeatedly. It was undoubtedly her. Um, what's up, Julie? I came to eat dinner. Huh? I forgot to go to the supermarket. It's still seven, so it's still open, you know. Come on, if I go now and make dinner, it will be pretty late, right? I thought having yours would be better than nothing. Why does she have to say it like that? What are you having? Beef stew, but... That sounds perfect. I will help you finish it rather than let it go to waste. She forced herself into the house. 
Then she plopped down on the sofa without hesitation and changed the TV channel on her own. I'm starving, so get it ready soon. Martin won't be home until 8, so I will be waiting until then. No way! I can't wait that long. Just prepare it for me first. She got upset like a child. I reluctantly prepared the stew for her and set it on the table. She sat down and ate it while keeping her eyes on TV. As expected, there were no words of gratitude from her. She finished it in no time and then sat back on the sofa to watch TV. I sighed as I cleared her dishes. She was like an ill-mannered child. When Martin came back, he was surprised to find her in our living room. He was exasperated when I explained the situation. From then on, she ate dinner at our house almost every night. She practically treated our place as her own, and we started getting irritated with her attitude. What's more, she made us do everything while not lifting her finger herself. Not only house chores, but she didn't contribute a penny to that remote cost, even though we discussed splitting. Also, she ate at our house every day, but she didn't pitch in for groceries. When we finally asked her to contribute at least for her own food, she came up with nonsensical excuses, saying she was just letting us treat her and show no intention of paying. While we were earning decently, with the remote cost and the daily growing food expenses, our expenditures had become quite high. So we had to confront her once again. Mom, it's time to pay up. What do I have to pay for? It was a promise, right? We agreed to split the remote and cost. It's been a few months since we moved in, but you haven't paid a dime. When Martin pressed her, she got defensive. You guys made the decision on your own, right? So why do I need to pay? I didn't agree to a duplex house to begin with. She made unreasonable claims. Then, to my surprise, he sided with her. Yeah, you're right. What? I was stunned by his unexpected reply. Sorry, mom. When he apologized, she put a smug look on her face. No worries, if you understand. Just be more careful from now on. I wasn't satisfied, but he grabbed my hand, and we left her house. Hey, what are you thinking? Back at our place, I questioned him. What if we sell this house? But if we do that, your mom won't have a place to live. Don't worry about her anymore. If she wants to do whatever she wants, let her do it alone. Let's leave just the two of us. His idea shifted my thoughts in that direction. You are so right. We've been too accommodating to her for too long. I've had enough. We quickly prepared to move, starting with finding an apartment for the two of us. We didn't mind renting again, and it didn't have to be spacious. We compared our non-negotiable conditions and found a suitable property. We promptly signed a lease to be able to move in any time. We put the house on the market, packed our belongings, and were ready to go. Meanwhile, Julie had no clue what was going on. We kept it a secret until the last minute to trouble her. Soon after, the moving company arrived and started loading our belongings. Then, Julie rushed over in a panic. What in the world is going on? Are you guys moving? Yeah, we are. Then there's no point. What am I supposed to do alone? You are still healthy. You can live alone. We are cutting ties with you, mom. What are you saying? You can't do such a thing. Yeah, we can, and we won't be dealing with you anymore. When he finally stated, she got angry and defiant. What's wrong with you, you idiot? I would be fine without you guys anyway. 
I will live it up in this house. Then we drop a bomb on her. What are you talking about? We've already put this house on the market. What? The owner is moving, so it's obvious, isn't it? Wait, wait a minute, Martin. So I will have to leave too? Yeah, but if you buy the house, you can stay. Right, honey? Sure. Would you like to buy my house? What do you mean by your house? Looks like you haven't been listening at all. This house was originally my family house. I inherited it and remodeled it. Really? So I have the right to sell it. Of course, you will have to leave too. If you try to remain, I will have you arrested for trespassing. Oh no! She finally seemed to understand her situation. W wait! If you leave me behind, who will I rely on? Martin, are you abandoning your own mother? You only bring out your family when it suits you, huh? I can't see myself caring about someone like that anymore. We are moving now. You should leave soon, too. Martin! She was left speechless, looking pale. We left the house without giving another glance at her. Later, she was forcibly kicked out of the house. We blocked her on our phones, so we never got any direct calls. But Martin received emails. She managed to find a cheap rundown apartment. But she claimed she was struggling and needed financial assistance. We had already covered her living expenses and remodeling the cost. We cut ties when we left, so we didn't need to be involved anymore. He deleted the emails and marked her address as spam. We heard from our relatives that she was accumulating debts and seeking financial help, but we told them not to engage and explain that we were no longer connected. She is shut out by everyone, and no one knows how she is doing now. We decided to forget about her and focus on our lives. We plan to prioritize each other and live happily from now on.